I'm Tony Van Veen, CEO of Tismakers. Last night, I went to a concert and I had an experience that I have to tell you about. And it's probably not what you think. You see, a couple of years ago, I somehow became a big fan of this Norwegian rock band called Slomosa. They call the type of rock they play tundra rock. And they were in the US for the first time doing a mini tour and they were the opening act on a three band bill in Wilmington, Delaware of all places. Now, I live in Philly, 45 minutes away, and even though I had zero interest in the other two bands on the bill, I couldn't miss seeing Slomosa live for the first time. So, I drive 45 minutes each way to see Slomosa play a brief 30 minute opening set, and it was awesome. And I see you thinking, Great, Tony, you went to a concert, what's the point? Well, I have several points of interest to an artist like you. And here they are. Point number one, every artist who performs live today has to have merch for sale. At this concert, all three bands had big merch setups with at least half a dozen different items at their booths. Right after Slamosa set, people started lining up at their merch booth right after. Here's a brief video I took when the line was starting. It got much longer later. It took me at least 20 minutes in line before I got to buy my merch. If you don't have merch as an artist, you are missing out big time. Point number two, putting on a great show helps you sell merch. Slomosa was loud, they were tight, they delivered a great performance. When I was standing in line to buy merch, some random guy came over and asked, is this the merch line for the first band? I'm not sure he even knew their name, though to Slomosa's credit, they did mention their name from the stage a few times, which is key for opening acts. You should certainly do that. So when I told this guy, yes it is, he said, wow, and he got in line. Clearly, their great set had turned this guy into enough of a fan to get him to want to pull out his wallet and buy some merch. Point number three, one merch item is not enough for today's artist. All the bands had vinyl records and CDs. Slamos, in fact, had two different albums for sale on vinyl and on compact disc, and two different t-shirt designs and a baseball shirt. Remember, Different fans will want different items. Having a selection of product, even if it's a vinyl and CD version of your album and one t-shirt, will increase the odds that a fan will buy something and that you generate some revenue. Point number four. You don't need to be big or well known to drive major merch revenue. I mean, who in Wilmington, Delaware ever heard of Slamosa? Thanks to their strong performance, they gained dozens of new fans. And I estimate they must have sold merch to at least 50 people. Point number five, you don't need to sell your merch for cheap. Slamosa was selling one vinyl album for $30, the other for $35, CDs for 15 bucks, and t-shirts for 30. Plus, they had stickers, which were free if you bought merch. Now, touring when you're coming from Norway is expensive. So maybe they charge a bit of a premium to help cover costs. However, if you deliver for fans and they know that you're independent, they will want to support you by buying your merch. I feel the days of selling CDs for 10 bucks or LPs for 20 are long behind us. Think about this. In the big scheme of concert expenses nowadays, merch is one of the smaller items. After I paid for my concert ticket, for parking and a beer, the 65 bucks I dropped on a t-shirt and a vinyl record actually represented really good value, especially since those items will always remind me of this concert experience that I had. It's not just about playing that record. It's about having a memento of the concert. Point number six, if you are the artist, you have to get behind the merch booth yourself after the set. I might not have stood in a 20 minute merch line if it was just, just the merch guy behind the table, but because I was able to get the record autographed and take a selfie with the bass player, I had to get that merch. 
Such a big, cool part of being a fan is meeting the artists whose music you love. The merch booth is the perfect place to do that. Not only will you, as the artist, sell more merch, guaranteed, but fans will get to connect with you. And as a bonus to you, it's a real ego boost to the artist to hear from fans how much they love your music. Point number seven, even a small fan base can make a big difference. After Slamosa set, after I bought my merch, got my autograph on my selfie, I left. And interestingly, there were a handful of other fans, maybe half a dozen, who were also leaving. These were hardcore fans who paid over 40 bucks each for a ticket to see a 30 minute opening set by some rock band from Norway that no one's ever heard of. They bought their merch and they left. So let's do some back of the napkin math. How much of a game changer was selling merch for Slimosa last night? Many of the people I saw buying merch were buying multiple items, but let's assume it averaged to 50 bucks a piece and there were 50 people buying, that's a $2,500 haul in one night for the opening act on a three-band bill. Pretty amazing. And even if everyone bought just a, a record or, or a t-shirt for 30 bucks, it still amounts to a $1,500 merch night. Pays for one round trip ticket from Norway at least. And the coolest thing, this could be you. Every artist has to start out somewhere. No matter how small your fan base is right now, it's a start. If you deliver for them by writing great songs, giving great performances, and meeting them at the merch table, they will support you whenever you play. And slowly, your fan base will inevitably grow. Work on your craft, work on your website and your socials, get a lucky break here or there, and next thing you know, you could be having a $2,500 merch night. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next time.